Clickety clicks. Hello, everyone. It's episode 266. Aussie Tech Heads for another week, Thursday night, 1st of December. First day of summer, first day of crickets. Yeah, yeah, from the Gabba. Not much cricket. It got rained out today. But anyway, such is life. All right, so I've got another big show for you today, tonight. And uh, thanks for everyone joining us live in the lounge. Live.thesecrethub.com. If you want to watch the video after we record the show, you can catch it on youtube.com forward slash thesecrethub. Look for episode 266. Watch some of the other ones. Watch it on the big screen in your lounge room. Whatever you want to do. Don't get scared, though. Don't hide behind the couch. Join in live uh, and comment to us. Why don't you? On Skype, just load up Aussie Tech Heads. Sign into Aussie Tech Heads. Um, what do you call it? Skype name, handle, whatever you want to call it. Same, you know, little CB talk there. Uh, what else? Audio only on the Shoutcast system. Uh, go search for us. Also, the paper comes out twice daily. Paper.aussietechheads.com.au, where we do a few stories, compile them all together, and present them to you in magazine style. I think I believe there's an iPhone app and an iPad app. Also, uh, about you through the technology of the paper.li, that, which is the system that we use to bring you the magazine twice a day, the issues twice a day. And now, listen, a couple of things um, that there is that there is else. But uh, while we, uh, before I get to that, I just want to welcome Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, sir. How do you do? Hello, uh, lounge lizards. How do you do? Uh, they're going quite quite good. There's a few few of them in there tonight, so that's good to see. Now, I was, um, how's your week been, Eric? Let's start off with that. Oh, it's been <laughs> fantastic, as you know, Glenn. Now, you've been uh, trying to increase internet capacity down in uh, wherever you live, Sydney. One can try to, in- to increase one's internet capacity, but one will never increase the capacity of people's brains. <laughs> No, yeah. so for, to bring people up to speed, um, Eric had an ADSL connection and he saw that there was this Optus, what is it, Doxus 3 connection thing, gives you 2 meg up, 100 meg down and passed right past his doorway. So he thought, let me get my teeth into some of that. So he got his teeth into some of that and guess what? Didn't work. <laughs> Just didn't work. <laughs> let me, let, a, quick, a quick summary. Yeah. Telstra, in their kindness... And I was, and I'm, you know, very appreciative of this. Um, I was only six months into my ADSL two, ADSL two contract, and that was the line I was using for the podcast for this show and chewing the fat. But uh, the the lines in this street are pretty dirty and they're very old. They're about fifty years old, and the copper was just, it's just, it was just wasn't good enough. And so I thought, look, I've got to get cable. Get 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 me some of that uh, Optus. The Optus Lovin. Two megabit up. So six months into the contract, told Telstra I, don't, Telstra I didn't need it. Um, the cancellation fee was going to be $246, which I was prepared to pay. I didn't want to pay it, but I was prepared to pay it. But they they waived it. Yeah. They so waived the whole fee and I said, no, nope, because you've got so much business with us, which I do. I've got a schoolion mm, things with yeah, them. Yeah. Um, they cancelled it. Did they ask you why you were cancelling? Or I suppose because you had two things. Yeah, they just... And I told them and they said, oh, that, that's a shame. I said, I said, look, someone's been out. Because they said, look, you want someone to come out there and have a look at that line? I said, look, someone's already come out here and I, and they've tried to look at it and it's just it's just an old, you know, I'm going to have to replace the, the, the copper lines all the way from the street to my house and maybe possibly up to the, up to the junction box. Yeah, right. And I, you know, unless, unless you guys want to do it and soon, then I've just probably just get off it you know yeah, yeah. they said fair enough fair enough so they, they never sort of whispered in your ear about the doxus three no they didn't, they didn't. That, that's all right that's all right but i saw i just put my my expressions of interest on the doxus three yep so come um december 12 sydney they start rolling them out um hopefully i'll be uh there right in front of the line so do you reckon it's going to be a big uptake or do you reckon it's going to be it's fairly slowish, like Melbourne. Might be slow, but you know Sydney people are generally smarter than Melbourne people, so I'd say it'd be <laughs> fairly quick uptake. Oh, there goes half the lounge. See you. <laughs> yeah, but I, there's a there's a few Mel, the Melbourne people didn't obviously take it up as we mentioned last week, but I don't know why they reckon it was like only a thousand people. I can't yeah. believe that. But, I, I remember, can't. Melbourne, the Melbourne, the Melbourne um, push was more of a trial. Than anything right. else, it yep. wasn't heavily promoted. Yeah, yeah. It was 
But oh, and they were basically they wanted to get some some data, some statistics, some feedback from the people that did use it. You know, mm. get the bugs out of the system. Then they before they rolled it up nationwide. Yeah. But, so um, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, that, yeah, sorry. Rising nationwide, you know, 100 megabits now as part of the whole, you know, look at us, you've got to wait for a school in years for the NBN, but we can give it to you now. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so, that's going to be their marketing push, and there'll be a lot more Melbourne people. Now, do you um, reckon, do you reckon come, the, yeah, do you reckon come the December 12 that you're going to get it before Christmas? Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. No yeah. doubt about it. Well, I hope so too, because I've I've put my name down for it as well. So hopefully, uh, tech heads will be will be booming into these into these your ears uh, after December twelfth. We'll give it a couple of weeks to get installed. But yeah, so hopefully soon, no more Skype issues, no more internet issues. Let's go, baby. Now, anyway, yeah. um, yeah. well, I was reading up a bit just just quickly. I was reading up quickly on the Doxus three today, and the modem that Optus gave me. And look, the guy that came out today from Optus was fantastic. But anyway, back on the Optus thing, yeah. just quickly. I didn't work. I cancelled that contract, no penalties, after three days. I said, get rid of it. <laughs> it was to give me two megabits up. It was giving me, you know, five, 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 twelve kilobits. That's oh, yeah, no yeah. good. It was, that was lower than my uh, ADSL line. So I said, look, take it away. It was giving me 100 megabits down there. It was screaming. Mm. YouTube videos were loading in, you know, in a, in a split second. Um, yeah. And that's H, a, uh, HD videos were lo- loading in a split second. So you were- she said, I'll... Oh, yeah, you were you were uh, loading up a YouTube vid- video, and what it it just fully loaded, pretty much. Fully loaded in uh, 100, uh, 180p, um, what, you know, 1080p. Sorry, video. You you know how you see that bar moving? Yes. Across the video. Yep. Well, a, a, a thirty minute video, one eighty p, ten eighty p would would that bar that would move right across from start to finish in about thirty seconds. Oh. What? what? That's yeah. all right. That's good. The, the buffer is just it a buffer in thirty seconds. Yeah. So, and I'm reading a little bit on the technology on the on the on the Doxus three, and they are they they are throttling it at their end anyway because it's capable of doing three sixty megabits down and yeah, right. one forty megabits up, and what they're throttling it. I don't, this is what I don't understand. Why? Everyone, there's cable everywhere in in Australia, and if there isn't, it's a lot cheaper to to lay than fibre. Hmm. Why don't they get? Why are we having the MBN? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I what the MBN's only going to give us a hundred down, isn't it? And it's got, and wants to give us forty up, five up or ten up. I don't know what it is up. No, I think it's I more maximum forty. I think. Hundred, hundred. Yeah, okay. Hundred by forty or something. Well, that's, that's their competitive edge, but you know, Telstra can just go. You know what? We'll keep you uh, on cable if you um, if you stay with us, and we'll give you forty up. Yeah, then you don't have to move. Yeah. So anyway, so at the end of the day, uh, yeah, Will was. I mean, um, Eric was getting some bad downloads. The tech came out a few times, or we placed the modem. Tech came out. Uploads were good. Uploads were shit. Yeah. So it's hard to believe, but anyway, uh, and, and as as it may happen, that I was actually talking to Steve. I think if everyone remembers, uh, Ozzy was on the start, on the show oh, a few weeks ago. Now he was uh, he has got his Optus Extreme or Power Pack installed as well. But he's down in Melbourne, and he's got same similar issues. He's I was talking to him today. Modem kept rebooting, kept losing the Skype call. <laughs> it's it's fairly hopeless. It's not, it's not technology. Don't get don't get as wrong, people. The technology. Because I've, for example, on Telstra now, I'm on 30 megabits down, and it's a solid 1.2 up. I'm talking to you now while I'm watching the stream, and there's yeah. very little degradation. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Couldn't yeah. do that. It's it's not so. It's not the technology. Doxus technology is not too bad. The, the cable, the fiber coax is, is not too bad. Yeah. It's Optus, and their implementation of it is a piece of shit. So anyway, so we're, we're all waiting for the uh, Telstra rollout. Sydney, Gold Coast, uh, Brisbane and Perth has already been rolled out, if I, yeah, if Perth, I remember. And, uh, uh, yesterday or today, I'm not sure. Yep, so if in Perth, go down and get some upload loving. Uh, two meg up, or up to two meg up. Now, um, yeah, I, I did forget to say that Will is still not here. He's got a sore back, can't sit up for too long. He's on some medications, which makes him see funny things. <laughs> so, funny than normal. So he's um, he's probably watching the show now and and seeing some um, you know like sexy babe or something like that. <laughs> I, <couldn't laughs> I don't know. A wig on a dress. 
<laughs> but anyway, all right. So let's get into some uh, more um, more sensible stories. Because uh, now, where do we want to start? Did you want to start, Eric, or do you want me to pick one out? Go for your life. Oh right, well, I'll start at the top. I might as well. This is a story I picked up through the week. This um, is. Now, I don't know, it's always interesting, you know, the the newspapers, you know, they, they, they're, they're always kept, every edition is always kept, as you would probably know, in the National Archive somewhere, but, and, and so is the case in Britain. Um, the British Library has scanned, or is scanning, 18th and 19th century newspapers. Now, four million pages of newspapers from the 18th and 19th centuries have been made available online by the British Library. So you can go and have a look at these. It does cost a little bit, but um, not too much. But you can still go and have a look at them. Now, the website is britishnewspaperarchive.co.au. britishnewspaperarchive.co.au. Now, if I can uh, just bring these up here, and uh, I'll show everyone what what the site looks like so you know when you get there. It's a, As you would imagine, it's a very conservative-looking site. It's probably quite functional. Colours are very, I don't know, pale? Would you call them pale colours? But anyway, that's how they want Yeah, that's how they want to do it. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, 18th, 19th century. So I think it stops at about 1944. So you can read the newspapers up to 1944. Now I've also got here the pricing, and I'll let you know how much the pricing is, if it uh, redirects correctly through the networks here we go so a two-day package six pound 95 that's probably expensive six pounds that's uh 10 bucks yeah uh 30-day package 30 pound and unlimited access uh for 12 months 80 pound so that's probably the best one to go to if you've got a lot of research to do uh, there, there, there's no even no even like demos or anything there, but you can see on the side there's a bit of a paper. But uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Oh, look, I did a few searches for a couple of things. None of my searches panned out to be any good though. <laughs> but I don't know why. But uh, oh, look, yeah, I did search Queen Elizabeth and uh, or the Queen Victoria and stuff, or whatever she was, the Queen I did, and she came up, so she was all right. Now the the public. Uh, will now be able to scan the content. Now, there's 200 titles from around Britain and Ireland. These include historic events such as the wedding of Victoria and Albert and the rise of the railways. Uh, the archive is free to search, uh, but it, as we just said, does cost to uh, actually pull stuff down. A team has spent a year at the British Library newspaper, uh, at the British Library's newspaper library Ooh. at Collendale, North London, digitising up to 8,000 pages a day. Wow. And they expect to scan up to 40 million pages over the next 10 years. That's pretty good. Huh. Uh, that's a lot, eh? That is a lot. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's probably worth, you know, if you've got um, whatever, you know, relatives or whatever, uh, ancestors from England, just punch their name and you might be able to find a little yeah. newspaper. Find out it. one of your ancestors actually got busted for stealing a loaf of bread and got sent to Australia. Yeah, well, that's right. It goes back to the 18th century. So, um, yeah, it does give you the search results and a bit of text. And I think to actually read the full article, I'm not sure. Look, I didn't pay for it, so I don't even know if you get the full um, the full newspaper, you know, print lookalike sort of scan thing. I don't know. Oh, you might get what, what, the, like the, what the front page looked like on that day. Mm. That's yeah. good. You'd front a couple of those. I'd, I'd, I'd pay 10 bucks for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, historical days, you know, when... Uh, you know, when they yeah. declared war in Germany or something like that? Yeah, you could pro oh, you, you, yeah, they'd probably... Oh, that'd be probably copyrighted. You might, they probably wouldn't let you do that. Too bad. Yeah. Copyright's got... Um, it's uh, more than 100 years old. Oh, no, it's not. That's the war. Oh, OK, the Boer War. The 18th, okay, <laughs> the 18th century would be. Actually, yeah, so hang on a minute. Yeah, 18th century. Anything up to... Uh, what are we now? 2011. Anything up to 1911. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so yeah, you're probably right. You could probably do that. That'd be probably a good little, a good little thing. But you'd have to like, probably take it to a, a commercial printer or something because you'd want a big one. You would just want a lot of lay four. They wouldn't know. No, just say your old grandpappy had it in That's the chest. Not, not saying I would do it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Milo's in the lounge. He, he says he wants to get a paper that was released on his birthday. What in 1911? Maybe they have a paper released oh, on your birthday. No. How old am I? <laughs> what so, happened on this yeah. day in 1963? That's right. Hey, that's where you could do your on this day things from. You could pull from, up. Yeah, it would be very English centric. <laughs> on this day. 
That's right. You, you need the, the the hand on the ear. All right. So um yeah. So that's that. Now um. Now, now I've sent you a file. Yes. If you want to uh, have a look at that? If you accept that file, and I'll then I can talk about the story that might some people might find interesting. Now did you um hang on? Where do we? Oh yes. What is that? Is this a picture to go with the file? It's with the story. With the story. So, with the story I'm about to tell you. So while I'm talking, you can load that up if you wish. Okay, I'll put you there. Okay, yes. All right. The original Apple contract that was signed by three people in 19, whatever day it was, 1976, um, is for sale for $150,000. To give the, yeah, CNN, to give the pun on a slice of early Apple history. Three of the legal documents that detail the founding of the revolutionary computer company are going up for auction soon, some two months after the death of co-founder Steve Jobs. Sotheby's, the auction house, is hosting the sale and expects the papers to go for between one hundred and one hundred fifty thousand dollars. The nineteen seventy-six document, which belong, once belonged to Ronald G. Wayne, one of Apple's founding founders, along with Stephen Jobs and Stephen Wozniak. Uh, is the first in the story of one of America's most important companies, uh, they say in a press release. So Ronald Wayne, he was a um, one-third partner for, um, or 10%, no, 10, one-third, no, 10 percent share. He lasted 12 days. Oh, all right. <laughs> and he, he backed out. The reason was that apparently he was um, fairly heavily mortgaged and he, he he was a bit of an entrepreneur consultant. You'll, you you. Once you finally sort out your Android phone and get up to this part of the story, oh, look, you'll know. I won't talk to you about Optus and your internet. You don't talk to me about the Android phone. <laughs> but just just two things. Optus, you're a piece of shit. And Android, you are also a piece of shit. Anyway. You're its brother. Continue. Uh, yeah, continue. So, uh, yeah, so he was a bit... You know, he was a bit worried. He'd lost his shirt in a couple of deals and he was heavily mortgaged and blah, blah. And he said, look, I don't have the stomach to, to, to deal with this right now. So can I just have my money back? Yeah, right. So mm. I was just looking at this. I did flash that up, the, the image you just sent me while you were talking. I think Ronald, he had the nicest signature. Steve, I haven't. Flash it up again. Steve looked like he actually signed by a kid. And Steve, oh, that's Jobsy. And Wozniak, who's on top. Yeah, that's... He, was, he was pretty pissed when he signed that. Actually, <laughs> but Ron, Ronnie's is a is a is a more um, professional signature. Well, he was a bit older too. But notice the date, nineteen seventy six, April oh, Fool's. April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah, Who, who's laughing now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of Apple, then uh, Samsung Galaxy Galaxy Tab, they've gone Galaxy. back to, gone back to court. The full Again. court. Oh, yeah, they're always bloody in court, aren't they? But anyway, they're going back to Samsung and whatever. Uh, Samsung have appealed the decision. And uh, today it was overturned. They uh, The full court, the federal court today, the full court of the federal court today overturned the decision made on October the 13th uh, about uh, Apple and their inter... Now, these are big words here. Interlocutory injunction which prevented Samsung from selling its Galaxy Tab 10.1 in Australia. Now, the judges, Dowsett, is that Dowsett, A? Eh? No, oh, I don't know. Anyway, they success successfully appealed and effectively enabling the company to put its controversial tablet back on the market. Let's have a look at one. There it is. Uh, following a subsequent request by Apple to stay... The orders, the injunction will now remain in place until 4 p.m. on Friday, tomorrow, giving Apple time to prepare and submit another appeal of the appeal to be appealed. Uh, now, so it could be some time, but maybe as early as next week, as next week before we see the stocks uh, sold of the Samsung, if there's any already here to be sold. Here's a question. Here's a rhetorical question, which basically means no one, not, I don't really expect an answer, is that I wonder, are these tablets sitting in a warehouse in Sydney? Or are they somewhere else? Because I, the the thing was they weren't allowed to sell them. So I wonder whether or not they're probably sitting in a warehouse because they're not there allowed to go. ship them. And ship, you can design ship anyway. Ship, ship Okay, here yeah. we go. I was not allowed to ship the tablet into the country until after 4 o'clock. All right, so they right. mustn't be in the country then. Nice. Or they are. No one's going to really find out, are they? Let's face it. So Apple are probably hoping that they're going to get their this... Uh, this stay of execution as 
so to speak. That's right tomorrow. So they'll put their they'll put their appeal in. They're preparing the papers right now. Don't mm. mind. the lawyers won't be sleeping tonight. No. And at <laughs> row one tomorrow, they're going to put their appeal in. Yeah. And the judges have to hear it. They can't say, "Well, sorry." He's it's... going to have to hear it there and then and make a decision on the appeal. Well, but... not a decision, but hear it but and what... make a decision on that later. Or say, sorry, I can't hear that right now, but lodge the appeal and I'll hear it on Monday, in which either way, they're not going to be selling them on the, on the weekend. But why does a judge have to hear it straight away? No, he doesn't have to. But even if he hears it straight away or he doesn't, once it's lodged, whether he looks at the papers or not, once it's lodged, Samsung are back to square one. Okay, right, because that because okay, right. It's still been lodged. Right, okay. So I'd go, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll read it on Tuesday. Okay, fine. Or I'll read it now. doesn't matter. One way or another, until the appeal has been decided in a court or through settlement or through a judge's decision yes. down the track, yeah. now, they'll just... lodge it at 401. So, Samsung, you can forget about getting your stuff out for Christmas. <laughs> Take them from under the, out of the Christmas stocking. Now, look, at the top of the show, I just wanted to also, which I forgot because I, I think I introduced Eric and I forgot an important part. But uh, what I wanted to say is um, I've been waiting for a couple of weeks to say hello to all our international listeners. And I have got a little list here of some of them. So hello mm. to those in the unknown territory, wherever that is. Uh, New Zealand, the US, China, hello, Canada, Bahrain. I don't even know where that is. Middle East, mate. Oh, jeez. Hello. <laughs> and uh, uh, UK, Germany, Morocco. So there's a few there. We'll, we'll, we'll say hello to a few more next week. There you um, go. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, what else have we got going here? Oh, yeah. All right. You want, have you want heard, me to throw one in? Oh, I was just going to go. Have you heard it? I'll just do this one, then you do another one. Uh, how's okay. you heard of this Yelp thing? I have heard of Yelp. Yelp. I won't be... I won't be participating. Yelp.com.au. Like, it's launched in Australia, apparently pretty big in the US. Uh, look, look, I signed up for it. I don't know if I'd actually be using it either. <laughs> well, for, for, for one... time you get a bad meal, what are you going to rush home and write a review? I mean, Jesus. Oh, no, you write it right there. Take a picture of it because you've got an iPhone app. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. Take, yeah, a picture, take a picture of the salad with a bit of, with a hair in it. Yeah, so 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 one problem Yelp, if you're listening, or can I can make make Yelp is um when you load it up, it always defaults to Sydney. I'm not in Sydney. I have to have to keep changing it to uh, Gold Coast. Come on, come on. Um yeah, but anyway, what what is Yelp? I hear you ask if you don't know. Well, it's sort of like a, a site where you you go somewhere, retail outlet, restaurant night, whatever, you review it. You had good service, you review it. You had bad service, I guess, you review it as well. Um, Yelp was founded in 2004 to help people find great... It's amazing. I've, I'm, I've just typed in accountants and there's a whole bunch of them in here. I think these people, one review, one, five stars, one review, four stars, blah, blah. It's all the people who are actually putting their own business up there and giving themselves reviews. Like, come on, yeah. fellas. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit sus, isn't it? There's only one there. I might do the same thing. Yeah, why not? Oh, I'll do mine too. Uh, now, Yelp had an average average of approximately 61 million unique visitors in quarter three 2011. That would be US-based, uh, right. which is quite a significant amount. Um, Yelp, Yelpers, as they are known, have written over, this is all obviously for the US-based one, have written over 22 million local reviews. So it's certainly taken off over there. So... We'll see if it takes off over here. There's all iPhone, Android, BlackBerry apps, and you can have a weekly Yelp update to your email address. Good stuff. Yelp. Mm. My dog yelps. Now, what were you? Uh, yeah. what, what story were you on to? Uh, let's see. The where are There's my story here. Holy smoke! <clears throat> Second iPhone catches on fire. Did you hear this? Yes, I did hear this. Holy yeah, well, like, smokes. It seems Australia isn't the only country to have experienced a combustible iPhone 4. But I bet you it plays audiobooks. Reports <laughs> say that the device plugged in for overnight charging began emitting smoke and sparks less than 30 minutes, 30 centimetres from its sleeping owner's face. <laughs> the iPhone 4, iPhone's owner was unhurt but flustered, according to Brazilian media. So this is the Brazilian, the second one. The device... Made in France. What? The device 
was made in France, where in 2009 a teenager claimed to have been hit in the eye with a glass splinter. Oh, this was the other one. iPhone began hissing and its glass screen exploded. Well, he had the snake app on. <laughs> Turn it so off. That's what I Turn off the snake app. That's right. Okay. Well, there's your problem right there. It was an eight gigabyte version. Who buys those? Yeah, what a hiss! What, what, what a hissy it! They wanted you to upgrade to a more expensive one. That's why. But anyway, this one in Australia was on. Apparently, uh, happened. It exploded at the end of a a flight, a Rex flight, the regional uh, regional airplanes things in yeah, Australia. It was freaking out! It was freaking out because it was on a regional flight on a piece of crap airline. That's right. So the uh, wreck said in a statement that one of its planes landed in Sydney last week. A passenger's handset started emitting a significant amount of dense smoke accompanied by a red glow. And there's a just you'll have to Google these pictures if you're listening on the podcast. But there's a picture of it exploded, and it certainly has exploded. That wouldn't be that'd be pretty tough to get to do that to it, eh? Wouldn't want someone any of that shrapnel bloody flying in your face, though, would you? No, I, I'd be hissing, I suppose, if that happened to me. <laughs> You'd be having a hissy fit. I would be. I would be. Now, I'll do another little quick one um, because I guess have have you done any, listened to any Audible books through the week? Do you want to? I haven't, mate. I looked through Audible and I this week I could not find anything I was interested in. Yep, that's all right. So we'll just say that there's 100,000 titles that you can choose from uh, through masses of uh, genres, heaps of them, thousands of them. So you can... And it's not to say that there aren't any good books just because I couldn't find one I like. I'm very picky. Just remember mm. that. And, and Eric did have a bad week. So. I had a shocking week. <laughs> so he didn't have time to go, to go skylarking around the Audible site. But anyway, you if you've got the time, you can too. And you can get a free credit if you go to aussietechheads.com.au. Click on the Audible banner down the bottom and it'll take you to a sign-up page. You get a free credit for one of their books. You keep it, uh, you download, you keep it forever. And if you decide to continue on, well, you pay a small monthly fee. So good stuff. And if you sign up through the link, through the banner on the page, on the aussietechheads.com.au page, you, uh, you're you helping us out more importantly and also um, probably giving Audible a couple of cents as well. So that's good. That's good. Thank you very much. Um, yes. So we'll just move on to some more stories. Now, yes. I've, got, I've got another one. Oh, do you want to have another go? What about, what about Apple moves to repair its reputation? Oh, why? What's happened to them? Nothing. It says here, Apple ranked the least green. Uh, Bob Brown, are you listening? Julia Gillard, you should be listening since Bob Brown lives in your purse. (laughs) Apple ranked the least green of the big tech companies earlier this year, is moving quietly to repair its reputation by switching its vast U.S. East Coast data center. You know the the new one that they built, the billion-dollar one they built in North Carolina? Yes. Yes. Right? Yep. They're switching that from coal to solar, the whole thing. Can you wow. imagine how much, so many solar, solar panels you're going to uh, need for that? Wow. So- the, um, the facility will help Apple recover from a Greenpeace report, yeah, because they're experts, earlier this year that said its cloud computing operations run from the centres, such as the one in North Carolina, were reliant on dirty energy, dirty, dirty energy, such as coal. Yeah, well, it is pretty dirty, isn't it? But yeah, right. That's going to be a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of uh, glass and solar panels oh, and stuff. A lot of glass. But then, but then the greenies will complain about that. You got too much glass up there. <laughs> You're taking all our sand off the beaches. <laughs> right. What about? Can't you just get your employees to just pedal on bicycles and stuff? <laughs> yeah, that that'd work. But um, no, just get a job, Greenpeace. But, Give me spe- a break. but speaking of um, uh, apples, and uh, obviously. Acer makes laptops as well. But uh, apparently through the week, the federal program, remember the laptop for every school kid in Australia and all that sort of stuff? Give me a start. So the federal uh, program provides $1,000 a computer and up to $1,500 for the installation maintenance of the device. Now, Acer said they've got they've won the contract for Queensland Some for the next round. Acer. Re- Acer. Mm, uh, okay. They're going to deploy their Acer Aspire 10, uh, 1830T notebooks. What's yeah. that look like? You got a picture of that? I might have. No, you might have. Might I'd have. never. I'd like to know what that looks like. You know what? I have. You seen the Ultra Books? Have you seen those? Oh, that, no. that's that's I've... lucky. That's geez. Some people don't know how to design computers. <laughs> have you seen the Ultra Books? Uh, I've heard of them. I haven't seen them. Just go and Google Ultra Books. 
because a lot of people are selling ultra but what ultra books are are basically um close to enough to a clone copy of macbook air right. and acer and lots of people that bring them out and they are really nice looking laptops beautiful looking laptops so these so, the okay the I, I, what did you call them ultra books ultra books oh okay here's one here quite nice looking have a little geezer this one does look like an air doesn't it oh they look yeah, pretty i think acer are making them as um yeah asus yeah that's the one yeah let's see if we can find oh here's one without the yeah look at that oh that's a small one but uh yeah so that's very the same color and everything isn't it and then look obviously it's a formula that works and they're mimicking it apple can't sue them for using the same color only, only the design is under. They'd like to. Patent, <laughs> and I'm sure they would. You know the rounded corners and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, they're all going ultrabook. You know, with SSD drives, yeah. no, uh, no optical drive, nice and thin, yeah, no nice. good processors, beautiful screens. But anyway, sixty-five thousand notebooks go to Queensland. It's the eighteen thirty T notebooks in schools before the end of the year. Just a bit hurry up. That school's only got a week left, hasn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone. Happy Merry just Christmas. Time, just in time for the NBN. Just in time for everyone to leave school. That's all right. Students would re- receive the re- Targus bags to also carry the little device in. So there you go. You also get a little carry device bag thing. Devices are also 3G enabled. And Australian first, apparently, according to the department's chief information <laughs> officer, uh, David O'Hagan. Good on Completely. you, Dave. What child, what parent do you know He's going to give their child, yeah, here you have, some th- here have a 3G plan on your laptop. No worries. Mm. Yeah. And we'll, we'll pay the uh, exorbitant uh, bloody fees because you just keep using it all the time. There's no way. Well, the schools, no way. wouldn't the, most of the schools that they'd be going into have Wi-Fi anyway? So where, where, where would you be using the 3G? Why you're down the, down the beach behind the, the shed smoking cigarettes or something? Exactly. You're at school, you've got Wi-Fi. Yeah, You come home right. with Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's right. So why do you need 3G? Anyway. No, my daughter's got a laptop. She doesn't need 3G. She takes her laptop to school every day. Mm. She doesn't need it. Yeah, right. The wife, the whole school. Yeah. Well, even if it's um, Wi-Fi, the, most of these kids uh, probably got iPhones. They just tether them anyway. So, <laughs> will be do. Well, I want to. Well, primary school kids wouldn't have them. Is this for high school kids or primary school kids? Uh, I don't think it actually It says, I don't know. It must be too quick. It just says to Queensland schools. It'd be high school. What? Doesn't the high school kids get one? Must be high school. I don't. They yeah, wouldn't be. They're not giving them the primary school, are they? Who knows? Who cares? Um, now, what are we going to now? Cisco has forecast cloud data traffic. Now, how's this to grow at a compounded annual rate of sixty-six percent between two thousand and ten and two thousand and fifteen? So, if you're leaving school and you want to make money, I reckon you'd be good advised. To, to write cloud applications. I, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's, I agree 100%. Yeah, so they've, they've, uh, they've forecast that the global data traffic, uh, I think by this mid, by about 2015, 4.8 zettabytes. Zettabytes. Now, what's a zettabyte? What well, zettabyte is a thousand terabytes or a million terabytes? What is it? I'm a not zettabyte sure. is one of those fellas. With twenty-one, a one, a number one, and twenty-one zeros after it. Yeah, That's, but that doesn't tell me anything. Okay, well, <laughs> how about That's this one? A billion. How about this That's one then? Billion. A zettabyte. So okay, so you've got a terabyte. You've got a petabyte. There we go. Zettabyte. So, terabyte. And there's only, 10 to the power of 21. Yeah, and there's only one more byte to go after the Zetas that's so far been invented, and that's a Yotta byte. Which is called Yotta. Yotta byte. Yotta byte. Hey, love, when you go down to the supermarket, get me a tub of that Yotta byte. Yeah. <laughs> and the Yotto byte is 10 to the power of 24. That's 24 zeros. So that's, um, that's just huge, isn't it? Jesus Christ, a gigabyte, terabyte, one terabyte. So, wow, that's quite a lot. Yeah. So, um, so that's that table actually comes from Wikipedia if you want to have a look at it. But I will show you just just because I took time to do this in Word today. But that's what one <laughs> set of byte looks like. Uh, it's one with twenty one zeros after it. 
Massive, massive. Um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, global data center traffic overall will increase fourfold, blah, 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 blah. So this translates into data traffic of, of 4.8 zettabytes per year by 2015 or every man, woman and child watching a full length movie once a day for a year. As wow. Of, as of so hang on, that's, that's easy enough to work out then. Because that's full length HD movies about, what is it, two gigs? Uh, oh, it depends. Three gigs. Does it Three gigs. It says it just so says a full length. Household year, we'd be, we we we'd be going through fifteen gigs a day. Yeah. For the whole year, that's a lot of data. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's as, one half. As of this year, no storage system has achieved one zettabyte of information. The combined space of all computer hard drives in the world was estimated at approximately 160 exabytes in 2006. Now let's Which go back. Which is one above the, the, the zettabyte. Let's is that go, right? <laughs> let's go back yeah, to uh, above, the list. It. It's, it's the one above it. Yes, it's the one above it. So mm. I'll leave that list up while we, uh, can, while we finish well, this. Well, I'm going to go down to uh, Harvey Norman tomorrow and say, Jerry, I'd like a one zettabyte drive, please. You'd blow his head up. His head would explode. <laughs> He'd go, a one zeta. Anyway, <laughs> and then he'll go, yeah, and then he'll bullshit to me and say, yeah, I'll get you that, and that'll cost you one million dollars. That's all. And I'll go, no, mate, I'll get it from Amazon for 500000 He'll go, oh, bloody GST, it's not fair. No, then he'll go, then he'll go, are you going to buy that online? You go, yes, and you go, and then he'll go, well, that's going to cost you one yacht bite. <laughs> that's right. Stick that yottabyte up your exabyte. You petabyte. You gigabyte. <laughs> so anyway, um, so the combined space of all hard drives was estimated at approximately 160 exabytes in 2006. This has increased rapidly, however, as during 2011 fiscal year, Seagate reported selling a combined total of 330 exabytes of hard drives. But you know what the funny thing is? Everything you see on the web, even though you're consuming it, you're not saving it. No, that's no, no. Right. You, that, so yes, the, the, the data, the data that we're, the the storage of that information. Yes, that's using up space. Yes, but the con consumption is not necessarily using up that space. No, so no. There's let's, two. There's, let's not forget that. Yeah, there's two parts of this story. The first part was the 4.8 um, zettabytes floating around the world, got the traffic, and then the mm -hmm. second part was just to say that yeah, so there's um, yeah, 330 exabytes of hard drives sold in uh, yes. 2011. Uh, this does not include shipments from the other manufacturers. And as of 2009, the entire internet, I don't know how they estimate this, but they've given it their best shot, obviously. But the uh, entire internet was estimated to contain close to 500 exabytes. And this is half a zettabyte. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, so there so you everyone's head going to explode yet? Oh, apart from Jerry's. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's already exploded. Don't worry about him. <laughs> he's has exploded 10% more. But wasn't he, um, isn't he upset again now about something? Oh, look, he's upset every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care anymore. No. I read stories and I just, you know, oh, if, I, if I had a newspaper, I'd see his story, I'd rip it out and throw it in the bin. But because I read it <laughs> online, I can't, I can't throw my computer out, can I now? No, you put a hammer through it. But um, Not, but but isn't it like I think like that everything will change. Everything's in a bit moves in a circle. Like everything moves in a circle. Now you'll find yes. that like we're obviously dearer over here because we've got uh, you know higher maybe higher costs for the retailers, right? So things that you can buy for half price in, over in America and get them shipped to your door cost you half than what you would go and buy them down at bricks and mortar in Australia. It's probably because they've got lower lower. Um, uh, set up costs, lower running costs, etc. Wherever they are, but I mean, and over here, like things will continue to to be more expensive until the industry starts. I I believe starts to be in trouble. Then then obviously there's no no uh, tenants for the shops. The shopping centres will have to lower their rent, and then so you sort of start getting the reverse. The cycle starts sort of coming back around, if you know what yes. I mean. But not only it's not only that. Yeah, you're right. The rents are a massive part of it. You're listening, Frank Frank Lowy, you rip off merchant. Um, 
the rents are part of it, but it's also the margins that the retailers put on it unnecessarily, mm. you know, because some of these retailers do make super profits. And look, I've got yeah. nothing against that. But if you want to make super profits, that's fine. But you can only sell sell goods at a certain price mm. as long as the market's willing to pay it. Yes. Now, when the market stops, when the market decides that, hang on, I'm not prepared to pay that anymore, then you can't then run home to mummy and say it's not fair mm. you because think, you've been doing it for too long. Do you think that people would have more sympathy for Jerry if he wasn't a billionaire? You know? No, I don't like, think so. I don't think so. I think if he wasn't a billionaire, he, everyone would just think, oh, you're just a sore loser because you could never make it and that, you've got no money now. You know? So I don't, I, either way, I think you'd cop it. He's, yeah, lose-lose situation, you reckon? Yeah, it's a lose-lose situation. Um, but, you know, it's it's like anything. It's, it's comparative advantage economics. Look it up, people. Mm. And, comparative uh, advantage economics. Stick to what you're good at. And if he's not careful and he, and he doesn't want to go the way of Sanyo, did you hear this through the week? Poor no, Sa- I didn't. Sanyo, gone. Finished. Already. Gone, the whole thing. Yep, finished. Panasonic has announced that Sanyo will cease to exist from early next year. Oh, they're getting rid of the brand. But didn't Panasonic buy Sanyo a few years ago? Yes. Not yeah, right. but, but okay. the brand is gone. We will, the brand yeah. is being being uh, consumed into the vast back. Because Sanyo was their Panasonic. lower end consumer good. You'd only ever see Sanyo products in Kmart, but you'd see Panasonic brands in, you know, David yeah. Jones. For yeah, example. Oh, look, I think Sanyo used to have a fair name, mid mid road. Oh, they did, but. Mm. I think when they bought them, they decided, well, we can't compete with one another. Yeah. So we've yeah. got mate, one brand's got to be the high end brand, and the other one's got to be the lower end brand. Otherwise, we'll be bastardising our own market. But uh, Panasonic bought Sanyo for four point three billion in two thousand and eight. Uh, Sanyo was go. incorporated in nineteen fifty, so it's been around a while. Apparently, uh, started in forty seven, but incorporated in nineteen fifty. In fifty two, it made its first plastic radio, and in nineteen fifty four, Japan's first Pulsator type washing machine. Hmm. And all the girls love that one. The company's <laughs> name, well, they do the washing back then. The company's <laughs> name means that three oceans. <laughs> sorry. The company's name means three oceans in Japanese. There you go. Senor. Referring to the founder's ambition to sell their products worldwide across the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Indian Oceans. Now, Panasonic, uh, Sanyo supported the Betamax video format. Yes, to, correct. To their peril uh, from its invention yes. until the mid-1980s. Uh, but you know what? Betamax was actually better quality. Yeah, I know. Than, yes, VHS is a piece of piss. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, and uh, it was the best-selling video recorder in the UK in 1983. Don't know what the hell was the best-selling one over here. But anyways, the best... Well, all, the, all the TV stations and all the broadcasters pretty much worldwide stuck with Betamax. Yes, they did. Yeah, oh, look, I had, a, I had a beta and I also had a VHS. And I could tape, from, when I taped from tape to tape on a yeah. beta, I retained a better image than if yeah. I went VHS to VHS or beta to VHS. Um, I think yeah. beta was just... What does VHS stand for? Video? Um, I don't actually know. VHS, VHS. I don't know. Let me have a... VHS, very hard sell. Yeah, well, it wasn't, was it? Because I think... No, in the end, it wasn't. I think it wasn't a JVC that pretty much made made it. I think they just, just marketed the crap out of it. And uh, I think that's what made it. Yes, possibly. Yeah, I, oh, I have a feel. What well, might have been? I mean, would it be Panasonic? They had they, they had a similar thing with the um with the Blu-ray war and the HD war. Remember the, what was the what was the Ooh. what was the alternate called? Yeah, yeah, the H uh, um high definition, the Blu-ray and the high high def. But anyway, um, the VHS system. Stands for Video Home System. If anyone's uh, keeping notes out there, so um, I think we might have just lost Eric there, but we'll try and get him back in a sec. Actually, it might be a good time for a little piece of music. Okay, so we'll stop that. Wait for Eric to come back on board. I'll do another little track. Eric, come back. 
Harry, Hello. Come back. <laughs> oh, that was that was me, I think. Uh, I think so, because my internet was still pumping. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're in stereo. Yeah, there it is. Across the HD DVD, it was called. That's, yeah, it. that's it. Well, hang on, we haven't started again. I stopped. All right. Uh, Sorry, man. No, that's all right. Not your fault. These things happen. <laughs> Especially to us and me. Look, I'm actually looking forward to the Telstra. <laughs> The Telstra? Yeah. Big Pond, whatever. Hey, can I get a drink of water while you're doing that? My throat's really sore. Yep. Won't be a sec. Mm -hmm. So, Lounge, we've got a few more um, videos to go. I mean, stories to go. See you, Brad. Good stuff. Watch the rest of Moz. Keep it... Oh, yeah. Get the PC in year nine. And keep it to the end of year 12. Yeah, right. You probably do. Yeah, Sony was. Sony was... Well, I think Sony invented it. Sony invented um, Beta, as far as I know, from my history, my, my history up here. And, yeah, but there was other brands, obviously, that, that picked it up, and Sanyo was one of them. And as we were saying, it was the best-selling best, best uh, selling video in 1983 in the UK. And when Eric comes back, I'm going to show you a picture of it. They just can't wait. <laughs> and you'll go, oh, for those of us who are, for those of who are in my vintage, you'll go, oh, I remember those. <laughs> With the corded remote. Oh, look, there's another internet problem. Eric's going to pop off again. Yeah, look, I think, was Panasonic into VHS? I can't remember. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Panasonic. Was it? I think JVC really popularised the VHS. And then as as um, as we're all Gumbies, we just fell for it because it was an inferior system. As far as I was led to believe, it, Beta had the, had the better picture and VHS had a better sound. But then came the Super VHS, which was still pus, really. You had to buy special tapes and, and then come long play. Well, run at different speeds. Different speeds on different machines. Yeah, that was fun. I've still got a few long... I've still got VHS tapes I'm trying to get rid of. Get rid of. I've still got about 100 to go. Oh. VHS was yeah. cheaper. Yeah, cheaper. you're probably, yeah, right. probably right. Probably correct probably Mundo. Correct. Duh. Frosty, Frosty. Oh, Mano. Mano. And is Eric coming Eric back? I don't know. Back. Oh, my video oh, stopped my too. too. I can hear him. I can hear him. Sitting down. Sitting down. Just adjusting himself. Just adjusting himself. Opening up some mollies. All right, how long have we been going for, mate? Uh, 44. Okay. You have lost your video. Oh. Why you got more stories, or you finished? No, no, no. I was just wondering. Oh, yeah. I've got. A, I think I've got a couple more. All right, so I might just pick up with that VHS because I'm finished with that. I'm gonna yeah, I'll just I'll just repeat what Frosty said in the chat room. Where did we, where did it end up? When when did where did I get cut out? Um, let's have a listen. Keeping notes out there. So um, I think we might have just lost Eric there, but we'll try and get him back in a sec. Actually, it might be a good time for a little piece of music. Good situation. Um, but, you know, it's it's like anything. It's, it's comparative advantage economics. Oh, Look it up, people. That's too mm. long ago, is it? And, comparative uh, advantage economics. Stick to what you're good at. You know, yeah. David Jones, for example. Yeah, oh, look, I think Sanyo used to have a fair name. Mission to sell their products worldwide across the Atlantic, Pacific and the Indian Oceans. Um, I yeah. think Beta was just... What does VHS stand for? Video... Oh, well, that's where we're up to, I think. Um, I don't actually know. VHS, VHS. No, no, it oh, wasn't. We are talking about a... the Blu-ray War versus HD sell. DVD. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, was it? Because I think... No, in the end, it wasn't. I think it wasn't a JVC that pretty much made made it. I think they just, just marked... The HD War. Remember? The, what, was the, what, was the, what was the alternate called? Yeah. Yeah, the H... Um, 
high definition, the Blu-ray and the high high def. But anyway, um, yes, that's where we're up to. The all right, so we'll go from there. Yep. So we just go. Uh, what was it called? And and I'll, I'll just cut in and say, oh, Frosty's just said HD DVD. That sounds right. Yeah. So that was just high def DVD. Yeah, high definition DVD. Yeah. yeah. So did you want to come back in, or do you want me to come in? Yeah, I'll come back in. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. You count, count me down. <clears throat> go. Yeah, that's right. Um, Frosty's just said in the chat room, it's HD DVD. That's that's correct. Thank you, Frosty. Yes, yeah, so and I don't know if we lost you before I said what VHS stood for, but it was. It, uh, it did. I think I did get lost. What does it stand for? Uh, it was. Now I just oh, find it again. I was just here. It was the video home system. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, oh, see, that's why they sold more because it was sounded more consumer. Yeah. More consumer oriented. Yeah. Everyone's going, oh, home system, that means families and people can buy it. You know, a name like Betamax, who thought of that up? We can actually use an Arthur. Uh, Betamax sounds like a drug. Yeah, it does, doesn't a it? Heart, sounds like a heart drug. But anyway, this little machine, the, the Sanyo VTC5000, was, uh, there's a picture up there. Google it if you're on the podcast. Uh, but there was a VTC5000, uh, best-selling video recorder in the UK in 1983. And also another highly successful product was the Video 8 camcorder. Yes. And more r- more recently, they had a uh, they 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 felt they found themselves supporting the HD DVD, as Eric was saying, and uh, they've been on a bit of a losing streak, haven't they? Yes. yes, Panasonic, get it together. Yes, that's right, get it together. Uh, yeah, all right. Now you had a story. Um, oh no, I think so. No, oh, I do, but now I can't find my mask. But That's all right. Well, as we were talking, as we were talking about things exploding, like uh, Eric, yes. Eric had the iPhone explode on the plane. Well, apparently, HP printers uh, are susceptible to being hacked, and the hacker can set it on fire. What's going on there? I don't know, but I've got an HP printer. Give it your best shot. <laughs> okay. How old is it? Uh, recent. See, you you remember might, that one I bought? You that you get right. email oh, yeah. things to it. And then it would just print out and it'd be there waiting for you when you got home? You might be right. Uh, research, you might be right. I mean, not right. You might be right as in it won't affect you. Researchers at Columbia University in New York have discovered a vulnerability in HP LaserJet printers that could allow attackers to seal sensitive documents, gain control of corporate networks, or even set the affected device on fire. No. This can be accomplished because some HP LaserJet printers do not validate the origin of remote firmware updates before applying them. Seems basic, doesn't it? But, you know. Yeah. Uh, it means anyone can reprogram the device with malicious firmware. In lab demonstrations, the researchers even were able to leverage the vulnerability to overheat the printer's fuser, an ink drying mm. component, to cause paper to turn brown and to smoke. I love a brown paper. Yeah, I don't see too much of it. No. No, it's, but, al- uh, it's always behind me. Still on HP, I don't have this as a story. I was just reading this during the, just during the week it was a, because it was a business-related thing. But their credit rating has been dropped two notches from A to B. Oh, gee, that's a fair when drop. I say two notches, that sounds like one notch, but there's AAA yeah. and then there's AA and there's A and then there's B. So I think they're down to A instead of AAA. And uh, HP are not uh, having a good uh, run of it. They bought Palm, and then they decide one minute they're going to sell it, next minute they're not, then they're going to keep it, and then they hire it, then they got rid of the CEO, then they hire someone who used to run eBay, who knows nothing about computers. So I don't know. I don't know what (laughs) HP's doing. They're they're off off with the pixies. Uh, An executive, HP executive, told MSNBC, which first reported about, about the printers apparently getting on fire or possibility of that the firm's printers since 2009 have required digitally signed firmware upgrades hp did not immediately respond though uh, when this not. story broke hp's latest printers and firmware are better protected and the flaw is unlikely to exist in the latest models but that doesn't account for yes obviously a large number of models that still be out there being that the printers from about 2009 backwards probably are uh, have got the floor in them. Yeah, hands up, Lounge. Who's got one? I'll uh, just send me your IP address. <laughs> and then I'll call the fire brigade. 
That's uh, right. Plus, and have have triple O ready, will you? <laughs> and the researchers believe the vulnerability extends beyond HP. Naughty. Yeah. So other printers they're suggesting. Yes. Other brand printers. Well, who would mm. who would think that someone's going to try and hack into a printer? And over well, the hackers. Obviously, <laughs> and I, well, but but no, why? But I, I suppose if it's connected to a network, it's probably an obvious. Well, if it's a network printer, you, if, you, yeah. if you can get in through a printer, then you've got access to the whole network it's theoretically. A, it's an obvious door, isn't it? Really, I suppose. Mm. Um, now, keeping with scientists, because we all love scientists. Now, scientists are questioning if using Wi-Fi on a laptop to roam the internet is bad for men's health. Jeez, I hope not. Do you know why they say this? This is because in my experience, getting on a computer when you are married is bad for men's <laughs> health. <laughs> yes, but this particular story is about having a computer on you. Um, so they. I've heard this before too, but you know what? I I um I don't. I put my laptop if it's on my lap. I actually put it on top of a cushion. Okay. And um, I tell all my kids too that if they're going to put it on their laps, to put it on top of a cushion. Yes, yes, yeah, right. I've never thought about doing things like that. Um, but anyway, the story, the, I'll continue with the story first, uh, uh, interjecting there. But uh, scientists are questioning if using Wi-Fi on a laptop to run the internet could harm a man's fertility after lab work suggested ejaculated sperm was... <laughs> was <laughs> Completely unexpected. <laughs> well, sometimes... Uh, ejaculated sperm was significantly damaged o- after only four hours of exposure. The bench. Okay, my, so I had to interject, but my question is: so you're on a laptop, yep, and then the ejaculated sperm. So what were you looking at on the lap? What were you looking at on the laptop? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. No, no, it's not. It's not ejaculating while you're on the laptop. It's. <laughs> well, I should hope not. <laughs> No, it's um. So the the bench side test showed sperm were less able to swim, and had changes in the genetic code that they carry. Yeah, that was binary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Experts stress this does not mean that the same would occur in real life setting, and say men should not worry. They shouldn't worry well, about things. Well, I don't like that. worry, but I do put it on a cushion, and mm. I tell my kids to do the same thing. Yeah, right. So I, just to play it safe, you never know. Probably not a bad idea. Now, did you have any yeah. other stories, Eric? And I've got a couple yes. of quickies. Anyone want an NBN story? Yeah, give us an NBN story. Yeah. All right. Do you want me to show the, the NBN web page again? Yeah, go on. <laughs> so, there's nothing that hasn't moved since last month. <laughs> there's uh, nothing else to show about them. Yeah. No, they haven't done anything in the last month, so I'm sure it hasn't been updated. NBN has issued its final wholesale broadband agreements but internet service providers, ISPs, are still holding out on signing on a dotted line. The W, the WBA document, which means Wholesale Broadband Agreement, outlines the types of products and services that retail service providers can access on the NBN, as well as the terms and conditions of those services. NBN has been working on the document for over a year in, consul- in consultation with the industry. There have been five versions of the WBA, the agreement, with the last version shortening the length of the agreement to one year. So they they must have been trying to tie them up for quite a while if Mm. they've now shortened it to one year. Yeah. I I read also, just quickly, I haven't got too much info because I didn't actually keep the story for the show, but there's a lot of ISP or a few ISPs that just aren't signing, signing up to it. That's it. This is it. They're not signing it. So yeah. they're saying that the, the agreement strikes a fair balance, this is MBN saying this, a fair balance between our customers' needs for certainty and the flexibility we need to accommodate any further regulatory requirements. But internet service providers are be, appear to be far from pleased at the announcement. Uh, IONET's I. chief regulatory officer uh, told Z, ZDNet Australia that IONET had concerns over NBN not willing to accept liability for network outages. Is that is that typical? Oh, jeez! So they're saying no, no, no. Uh, we'll build it. We'll waste all your money, and we'll tell everyone how wonderful it is, and the whole world thinks it's great. But if it goes down, not our oh, problem. we're not taking responsibility for that. No way. Why, why would you? <laughs> you know, why would you? Spend, if you can't get it right after pissing up that much money against a wall, mm. shortly. Yeah. Yeah. It, anyway, but, but, so that's one of the reasons they're not signing it. But I said, and 
I That's said, just another delay that we've just put on the NBN. Thank you, uh, NBN, for being such yeah. pricks. Oh, look, I'm happy. Look, I feel sorry for everyone else who doesn't get, the obviously, the Telstra cable. Well, I'm happy so far that it's coming. And look, I'm just hoping it's going to solve my issues with upload speed. If I can double my upload speed, I think I'm going to be pretty right. So let's hope that it yeah. does. And uh, then, well, the NBN, well, yeah, he can probably go and take as long as it looks. Well, you know what? I'm the same. If I get, um, well, not if, when I get the 100 down and 2 megabits up, um, that's it. NBN, I don't care if it doesn't ever show up because... I'm not yeah. going to hold my breath waiting for these idiots to get it together. Yeah, obviously I'll still sign up if 40 meg up or, you know, possibility of faster ups. Oh, look, if it, if, it ha- if it just so happens that, hey, it's ready, yeah, sure, I'll sign up. No problem. But if it's not ready, I'm not going to lose any sleep because it keeps moving out. It's First it said it was completed by 2014. Now it's now blown out to 2021. <sighs> they what's... announced it in 2007. Yeah. So we're five years in. Give it, give or Five take. Five years in, a month. and they've done nothing. Re- re- relative, relative to what they said they would be up to after five years, they've done nothing. They've done less than ten percent of what they said they would be doing by this stage in the in the in the progress. Now, so it's blown out from two thousand and fourteen to two thousand and twenty-one, and with these delays, you can add another twenty-four months to that. Yeah, we'll be get, we'll be flying to the moon before it's here. Now. Frosty is in the lounge. He's he's said, made a comment. He he doesn't like the NBN because they took his city off the map. Now I think now Frosty's down in Tasmania. What? How do you mean? I don't understand that one. And I'd like to understand that one. Yes, Why yes, did they Frosty. take you off the map? I don't understand. Tasmania was never on the map. So how did you get off? But anyway, um, iPad three to get Microsoft Office in 2012. There you go. Uh, yeah, so I, I was really... That, 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 they're going to sell a lot of those... Because um, a lot of people have got Microsoft Office and they think, oh, well, I can't... You know, I can open my documents in pages hmm. and I can save it as a Word document, but it's not the same. Yes. So um, they're going to sell a lot of these. This, this is going to make Microsoft a shitload of money. Yeah, Shitload. Microsoft is working on Office for the iPad, bringing its uh, productivity suite to Apple's iPad. Yeah, tablets. Rumors, and then also rumors of the iPad three. Now, this is the first time I've heard of this. Rumors of the iPad three landing uh, in March, two thousand and twelve. That's a bit early. Yeah. It's very early. Rumors, rumors. But what? Oh, rumor. Well, I don't listen to rumors. No, nah. but it just came up, so I thought I'd spin one. Yeah, it's been a rumour. That's yeah. not bad. Uh, not right. Windows 8 tablets are expected to come in in 2012 as well. No, oh, I'm not. Look, I'm not. I'm not going to be in any hurry, mate. I don't like Windows 8. I reckon it's a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, so, but with all these laptops coming out, is is this the end of the laptop? Oh, the tablets no. coming out. Is this the end of the laptop? I don't think so. Yeah, you probably. Depends, depends. For for my usages, I, I'm finding that I'm using the iPad, yes, instead of the laptop for, for most things because it's because it's portable. Like I'll sit on the lounge or I'll, you know go out the back of a of a Sunday and read the paper or something on the iPad. Yeah, depends what your use is. For people who just consume things, that's fine. Yeah, lap, lap iPad, you know, good. Mm. But you know, I do a lot of work on a laptop, and there's no way I could get through the amount of work I do on a freaking iPad. Yeah. Yep. All right, now, we're just about out of time. We've got room for one more story from me and maybe one more from Eric if he's got one. Have you got any more or just you want to hear my story? Uh, One from you, mate, one from you. I'm tapped out. All right. Now, this one comes a little bit of a video. Uh, One British... Is this video going to get pulled down, mate? Oh, who knows? (laughs) Yeah, we showed that. You know, remember that video of the one of the the bear robotic that, sleeper. Yeah, that moved your head when you snored. Well, apparently yeah. YouTube pick it up. I don't know how they pick it up. They must obviously must be algorithm. A, yeah, it must be a good one. And so they've picked it up and they've they've attached it or identified it that the maybe the copyright belonged to probably some Japanese. I don't know, TV station or something, I don't have a clue. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. they send me a message and they say, "Oh, your show is banned in like." Japan, Taiwan, and all country, that. Yeah. I said, the other countries is all right. Just those countries. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And I went, oh, who cares? So anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway. Um, anyway, urinals are back in the news, believe oh. it or not. 
<laughs> Why would they be in the news? I tell you, have you ever gone to the the toilet? I know, just... I know where these urinals are. It must be in the NBN headquarters in the government <laughs> in Probably. Canberra. Because that's that's where they're pissing all our money up. Is that right? Yeah, it could be. They're all playing games. But uh, yeah, so urinals. That's what I was going to say. Have you been to the public toilets with the new flash hand dryers? Where... Well, no, hold on. They are flash. They are. Well, Which ones? They're new because you'd know, you'd probably know what I, you'd know if you had been there. Instead of rubbing your hands together and the heat comes out, you you slide your hands in, and then the thing yeah. just blows like crazy. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've been in a few. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just yeah, I've done that. A, yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, they're crazy, eh? Uh, but anyway, that's not anything to do with the story. But the urinal games make a splash. <laughs> Is what they call this. They, they have some fun with these headlines, don't they? One British pump pub, the Exhibit, has put in some urinal games into its laboratory with the hopes of enticing more male customers. So the video. So what happens is you've got a little screen in like in, in eye level, and you've got some sensors in the urinal, and and you've got this little dude that's skiing, right? Skiing like this. <laughs> through the slopes and then you control yeah. his you control his lean by by weighing onto the targets in the urinal oh that be fun <laughs> not your cup of tea technology at its best i say well let's have a look at the little video to give you uh an idea for those of you um on the podcast well i just explained what happened so so little sensors as we see there little sensors little screen and I think in a minute we're going to see the game. It's, it's not probably doesn't look like a bad game. There's one bloke playing it. Oh, game over. There's a little start button in the urinal. You wee on the start button. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, dude. And there you go. Yeah, there's some dude there. You never leave the toilet. They have to be pretty quick games. Yeah, what, well, once, what's, what happens if you're... You're supposed, to, you're supposed to be watching where you're peeing so you're not all over the floor. How are you going to watch that and the screen at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll I'll give this about three months before it's basically a piece of crap. Oh yeah, it's just it's just a one of those things, isn't it? A novelty. It'll you know it'll wear off. Someone will steal Pretty the screen. Funny. The drunk will put their glass through it or something. Oh yeah, you know. someone will vomit on it. <laughs> yeah, you know. And uh, I because when I as I was reading the story, I thought, geez, why would you want to be touching the screen? I thought it was like going to be a touch screen game. <laughs> oh. God, imagine the germs you'd pick up off that. Oh, I know, I know. But anyway, Everyone. there you go. Go to the exhibit in England and play a game while you pee. All yeah. right. Well, that's about the end of the show. So thanks, Eric. Thanks for coming along. No worries. Thank you, Glenn. Thank oh, you, Lounge. No problem. Stay tuned. Chewing the fat coming up next. Chewing the fat is back. Oh, yes. Well, yes. I'll have an explanation about last week's show in this week's show. Yes. So, uh, Chewing the Fat is next. Don't forget, uh, thanks to Brad and the techwebcast.info for the podcast that plays, replays before Aussie Tech at Tech Ends. 7 o'clock on Thursday nights on live.thesecrethub.com. And don't forget, that is Queensland time. And that, that is, and so you'll have to adjust your clock whichever way it is, wherever you are. So that about wraps us up for this week. So we thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for downloading. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. And we'll see you next week. Ta-da for now. Bye, guys.